All right. Today, we are having a toast off. Let's get started. All right, welcome back to Gadget Conquest, everybody. So uh, let me give you some background on what exactly is going on today. So over here on uh, my right, we have my existing toaster. This is a $15 Walmart branded toaster uh, that I got at Walmart for $15. Uh, Anyway, I've been using this toaster for about a year now and I thought it was fine until my uh, mother spent a couple nights here and just straight up told me to buy a new toaster and even sent me links <laughs> to, to other toasters. <laughs> so <laughs> clearly there's something up with this toaster and I, uh, I may have cheaped out too much on my toaster. But the question is, uh, what's a good price to spend on a toaster, you know? I just went with the cheapest option. I went with the $15 one. But there are toasters that are in the $50 range and there are toasters that are in the $100 range. There are even toasters that go above and beyond those ranges, but I think up to $100 is the amount that anyone should realistically spend on a toaster, unless you really, really love your toast. Now, I took my mom's advice and I ran with it and here we are. I bought this uh, GE toaster at Best Buy for I believe $32. It's normally a uh, $49.99, so a $50 toaster and it was just on sale for like 12 bucks off or 16 bucks off or something like that. Um, so I got this one to represent the mid-range of toasters all around the $50 price point, anywhere from, we'll say 40 to $60 and somewhere around there. And I found this Breville, Bre Breville, Breville? I'm gonna say Breville. I got this Breville toaster at Best Buy as well for a cool $100. Now, this is a technically a four slice toaster, and I say four slice and not four slot, because instead of being uh, four individual slots, it's actually two very wide slots, uh, each one being able to carry two pieces of bread. Part of the reason I liked that was because um, there are types of bread that are extra wide and don't normally fit in the toaster that I use, or would hit the edges and actually made it kind of uncomfortable to use. Uh, they would get kind of gross. So this is going to represent our high end. This is going to represent our mid end. Mid end? Mid, mid grade, mid, in the middle. <laughs> and this is gonna represent our low end. And what are we going to be making? Well, over here, I have some store brand white bread right here. I have some artisan bread from Sara Lee. Now this is um, the bread that I actually normally eat uh, right here. And then we also have some bagels because people make bagels. I mean, that's right. Toasters are used to make bagels. So we're going to be testing all three of these toasters using these three breads. We'll be making, well, I don't know if we'll be able to do <laughs> all of them at the same time, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. And we will test these toasters, see how they handle making each type of bread, see how it comes out, and we'll decide, did I cheap out too much buying my toaster or does it really not matter that much? So let's um, let's get into it. Let's start by unboxing these toasters. Now, this isn't an unboxing video, so I am just going to fast forward through the unboxing of uh, the two toasters here. So let's do that. <laughs> All 
All right, we finished our unboxing and before we move on to plugging these things in and doing our toast tests, let's talk a little bit about the appearances, right? So first we'll start with our cheapo $15 toaster. It's black plastic, it's very shiny black plastic, so it's very obviously plastic. It gets fingerprints on it very easily. It's covered in smudges, it's been around for a year. And the what I really noticed was the length of the cable uh, as compared to the other toasters is significantly shorter. At least it looks shorter. Yeah, so it seems to be that the, the cable is significantly shorter compared to the other toasters. Feature-wise, it just is a dial with our little thing here, and it doesn't actually, it has a feature where you can push it up a little bit extra, but it's very small amount. And the slots are about what you would expect for a toaster, right, size-wise. I did notice while I was looking at the other toasters as well, so this one, to clean it, there's this door on the bottom, and it's this little piece of metal that you bend out and the latch opens, and then you have to basically take the entire toaster and put it over the trash in order to properly clean it. While the other two actually have this really cool slide out cover. So you can slide this out from the back on this one, and I believe on this one as well. Same thing on both. You slide this thing out, it'll have your crumbs in it, and then you take it to the garbage and you dump it out. You don't have to take the entire toaster, which is really, really cool. This is kind of reminds me of like vent covers on a PC case, kind of interesting. All right, moving on to the, what was this? Was this GE or LG? GE, the GE toaster. <laughs> moving on to the GE toaster. It is a, a stainless steel design. It is a, a brushed look to it. And it has, on our front here, we have our dial for deciding how long to toast things for, but we also have a uh, frozen button, so I guess defrost, and then we have a bagel button as well, which I guess we will be using. And then there's also a cancel button, which is pretty cool. This does not have a cancel button. As far as going up and above, it does have a little bit extra uh, leeway, just like this one does to go above, although it is quite a bit more. Yeah, it's quite a bit more than that one did. As far as the interior design goes, the slots are a little bit wider on this one, I would say, and the bottom, there's a little piece on the bottom that has arms that stick up in order to keep the bread or whatever you put it into it centered. And the ones on here are longer and a little bit more angular, whereas the ones on here are very short and wide while not having very good angles. So I'm gonna assume that this one probably does a better job of keeping the bread um, centered. Now, the final toaster, this one squeaks a lot with the, if you can hear it. This one is squeaking quite a bit. And the reason for that is because this one, as you can see, is two really freaking long slots. We're talking easily the length of, yeah, yeah. Easily double, easily double the length of these. These are huge slots, but they're designed exactly the same way. So they still have that singular bar that goes all the way across the bottom. And the reason that it shakes seems to be because of the fact that the bar goes all the way across the bottom. Yeah, so because the bar is very long, it's very thin, it's a piece of metal, uh, it kind of wiggles a bit in place. It doesn't seem like it's gonna break or anything, but that is something that it does. And I think you'll only really notice it if it was on a wobbly surface like this particular table that I am on. Other than the giant slots, this does feature the controls on the front of the device, in or the side? I'm gonna call this the front. The front of the device instead of the side of the device like these do have, but it does still have the lever on the side of the device like these do as well. It has the motion, the extra motion to move up, and it is actually more so than the other two as well, and, it kind of feels like it goes lower, but that might be my imagination. 
As far as the buttons on the front go, there is no dial. There is just a five level uh, slider here. It's a pretty smooth motion on this slider, but it does function the same as the slider on the other ones. It has a bagel button and a frozen button, just like the GE. It has a cancel button, just like the GE. And the one thing that it has differently is this a bit more button, which uh, supposedly according to the reading is a button that you press and then I guess you push it back down again and it adds 30 extra seconds in case you need just a little bit extra toastiness, which is a kind of cool feature. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, something got caught in my throat. Uh, which is a kind of cool feature, especially if you often under toast things and you don't want to put it in for the full time again. You want to just keep it at the same temperature, but put it in for a little bit extra longer. This is a pretty cool button to have. Now, uh, the last thing that I was going to mention was actually the cable. So you, I showed you the cable for the $15 toaster. The cable for this one feels quite a bit more premium and it's also longer. Like the cable itself feels sturdier and it's longer. And then on the, what, what was the company for this one? DeVille? DeVille, I think it was. Breville. Breville. Breville? Breville. Breville. We'll call it Breville. Uh, on the, we'll call it Joshua. This is Joshua, okay? On the Joshua, the cable actually has a, oops, has a ground on it as well, unlike the other ones. I assume it's because this one carries more power because of the fact that it is bigger slots. It is supposed to be made four at a time, so it probably carries more power, which means it would need to be grounded. I also did notice, if you look at this cable, it there's a, it's a very, they actually spent money to make this cable look this way. This is clearly completely custom. Like this is something that you would just buy. This is completely custom. So you can very clearly see that the extra money you're spending is going somewhere, although I'm not sure about putting the extra money on a cable like this. It's not very difficult to unplug this, so um, the hand little finger hole here isn't super necessary, but it is cool. It is cool and it is nice to see that they did use the money for something other than just keeping it for themselves. Now let's plug these guys in. I have behind me, ugh, I have behind me here a UPS with a battery backup. So we'll go ahead and plug oops, these guys into here. And hopefully what we can do is keep them from overloading my breaker by plugging them into the battery backup. Although, you know, we'll see what happens. All right, cool. All right, we've got these guys plugged into the battery backup. Let's set them up like this and like this, well, we'll have them all facing the camera. Let's start with, since we can do, now, while we can obviously do two slices of uh, two different materials in each toaster at the same time, uh, I'm going to be putting these pieces in, in what I believe to be close to their optimal settings, so, I'm going to be doing every piece individually separately instead of doing like the bagels with the you know white bread at the same time because obviously those have two different settings and you wouldn't want to put those together. So we will open this and this isn't really a part you guys need to see but we'll go through real quick putting in these. I'll put these in, I'll put them down, I'll dial in their settings, and then we'll just kind of skip through all the way to the end, showing little bits as we go. Let's do that, shall we? We're back. Now the uh, Walmart toaster just now finished with its first run of bread and the other two toasters have been done for a minute now. So let's go ahead and judge the quality of the toast come from each toaster. Now, I had originally set the toasters on different, on a, what I believe to be equivalent settings, but what we ended up finding was um, the, because the Breville, our Joshua here, has a different, uh, 
set of numbers, so it's only one through five, whereas these are one through six or one through seven. The two setting on the Joshua here was equivalent to about a three or a four on these two and was absolutely annihilating the bread. So what we've done instead is we've pushed every toaster down to its minimal setting, the absolute lowest possible setting to see how it does in that case. Now, the three toasts I have here, I have our uh, Joshua GE and Wally, -E, which is our Walmart toaster. I have them labeled here. So we'll start with the Joshua here. So Joshua did not toast the bread uh, to the point where it changed colors. It did change texture. The toast, it, it is noticeably toasty, if you will, in texture. And it is evenly toasty on both sides. It's not like one side is noticeably more toasty than the other. The crust on the outside did toast as well. Yeah, let's toast. Not super great, but it's toast. Next is our GE. So our GE actually toasted it quite a bit more on the lowest setting, which is interesting. However, it is very unbalanced. So as you can see, uh, this side was toasted to the point where it's actually discolored, but this side has very, very light, almost unnoticeable discoloration. So it very clearly was toasting very heavily on one side, while it wasn't toasting uh, quite as heavily on the other side. Overall, it is toastier than the bread that came out of the Joshua. However, it's also noticeably uneven. One side very clearly was harder than the other just now. That was, that didn't, that was weird. All right, finally, we have our Wally. So Wally did the same thing as the GE where it toasted one on one side and uh, the other side did not get the discoloration. However, it should be noted that it did not discolor, the side that did get discolored was not discolored as badly as the GE was. However, it was discolored. So our Wally machine here does toast unevenly. I can feel from the texture that one side is softer than the other. Yeah, so it's not as badly balanced as the GE, but it is still a poorly balanced toast. However, the crust is a bit more smooth on the Wally toast which in this instance where I was looking for the lightest possible toast, I guess that is a good thing. Now, I'm going to take notes and set up our next set of toast, and then we will be right back with another set, another test. I should have cut when I, I snapped, but I didn't, so. Be right back. And we're back. Now, the first round of our contest here was mostly to judge, uh, one, the low end of power on these three uh, toasters, and every round is going to be judging how evenly they can toast what comes out of them. Uh, now for this particular type of bread that we're using, it's a thicker bread, it's denser. So I have raised the power on all of them to two, not very much higher. It's just went from one to two. Um, but hopefully we can get a little bit more toast out of them and see a little bit more discoloration and that will help us determine how evenly they can actually toast the bread that comes out of it. So our uh, Joshua is here first. The bread that came out of it was actually really evenly toasted on both sides. There's a very small amount of discoloration on both sides. However, I do notice that when compared to the GE and the Wally, -E, the discoloration is nowhere near as much as a very light discoloration, very, very light. 
Um, however, it is discolored, but it is, and it is even. I think that should really be the takeaway here is that it is toasting evenly. Let's see how it tastes. I like this bread, so. Yeah. So, it's not toasted all the way through. That's to be expected. It was only on two. This bread, usually you have to put it up a little bit higher to really get it to toast correctly, but it's even on both sides and that's what matters. Next, we have the GE. The GE toasted one side pretty heavily while barely toasting the other side. It, pretty, it goes to show uh, it's doing the same thing that it did in the last round. And it is also noticeably more toasted uh, just all over this surface. So as far as the evenness of the toasting on this side, it's actually much more even than the Wally World toaster is, which did manage to make darker discoloration. However, it is far less evenly spaced and the GE actually did a really good job of evenly spacing the toasting on this side. However, the other side is barely toasted. So while, actually it's barely toasted, but it is evenly toasted. So while each side is evenly toasted individually, together when you compare the two sides, one is very clearly toasted much more than the other. And it is noticeable when you bite it as well. Did this, to this toasted far more in on one side than the other, which leaves it with kind of a strange feel in the mouth. Now, finally is our Wally toaster. Now, this toasted one side more than the other, not to the extent that the GE did. The GE toasted one side very heavily as compared to the other side, which was very light. This side and this side are both toasted a little bit. One is a little bit more than the other. I would say, if I was to say, like, how toasted is it out of 10? It's like this side is a four and this side is a six, while this side had a six and a three, and this side was like two twos. So let's just take a bite out of this. I'm noticing that this one isn't... The edges aren't as toasted on this one. Mm. Yeah, so taking a bite out of it, it is much more uniformly toasted. However, the toast pattern on the Wally toaster is so messed up, it's so uneven that I imagine spreading any kind of spread on this would be kind of a nightmare. Whereas the GE toaster on both sides, because it's very clearly toasted well all on one side, spreading would be much easier on that because it's going to be a much more um, consistent texture all the way across the same side. So that's round two. We don't know who's in the lead yet. I'm not gonna say anything until the end about who's winning here, but round two is over. Let's move on to round three, three, one, two, three, where we are going to be toasting bagels. And I will be right back again. Welcome back. Did you notice I, I actually did it on the snap that time? Yeah. Anyway, the, uh, our Wally toaster here or Kid Flash, if you will. Uh, you know what, I'm calling this one Kid Flash from now on. So, Kid Flash just finished toasting our bagel. Now, I will say I did use the bagel button on Joshua and GE here. The Kid Flash does not have a bagel button, so I did not use the bagel button. It doesn't exist. Now, some of you might say, that's not fair. It doesn't have a bagel button, you shouldn't use the bagel button on the other ones. Well, you know what? You're paying extra for that feature. It's a feature, it comes with it. The question is, is it worth the money? That feature exists, you're gonna use that feature. I mean, you know, all's fair, right? Anyway, all of them were left at two, same thing that they were with the previous bread. And 
I noticed something with uh, Joshua here. Joshua has on this side this slider, right? And there's a light above that tells you sort of exactly where you are. And what I noticed is that light is actually a countdown timer and will actually a countdown to when it is complete, which I thought was pretty cool. You might not, you might think it's kind of lame. I thought it was cool, okay? Now, what was I doing? Right, bagels. Another thing I noticed was the bagel mode on Joshua here actually toasted the bagel more than the bagel mode on GE. Normally the GE is a little bit more on the uh, toasted side than Joshua here because I did leave them on the same setting other than pressing the bagel button, but Joshua did actually toast the bagel more, which I thought was pretty interesting. The other thing I thought was interesting uh, is the fact that to activate bagel mode on Joshua, you press the bagel button and then it will light up and you can push down on the lever here. However, on GE, in order to activate the bagel mode, you actually have to push the lever down first and then you can press the bagel button. Kind of an oversight, kind of stupid, honestly. Um, not very good engineering there, GE, I'm sorry. I calls it as it is. It wasn't very good engineering, but that's, that's how it goes. So let's try out these bagels, shall we? So starting with, you know what? Let's start with Kid Flash first. Kid Flash always goes last. This time Kid Flash gets to go first. All right. So as far as the toastedness of this bagel goes, it's not super toasted. It is toasted. I can feel that it's toasted. It is very warm in my hand. However, it's nowhere near as toasted as the other two, and I believe that's specifically because of that bagel button. I'm not sure what it does, but it does do something. It might even just raise the temperature of the toaster in general. Hmm. Yeah, it's bagel, all right. Honestly, it's actually toasted pretty well. It managed to toast the bagel evenly on both sides, which is very interesting. And it actually came out pretty good. I did use both slots. Actually, I guess I should test. I should take a bite out of the other bagel, the other side of the bagel as well. Hmm. Ooh, yeah. It was a good choice to do that. This one is not toasted evenly on both sides. So the top slice was, but the bottom slice was not. And they are the same thickness, which leads me to believe that the heating element on this toaster is very one-sided. It favors one side over the other. Although I'm not sure which slot it is that it favors because I did not keep note of which slot I'd put the sides into. But it is very clearly far more toasted on one side than it is on the other side. Now, let's move on to the GE, shall we? So the GE is pretty unevenly toasted. However, I kind of expect that out of a bagel. They're not very flat, especially since you have to take them apart. So it's going to be unevenly toasted. That's fine. I kind of accept that. Uh, it is toasted on both sides, however. Mm, that's good. And it's toasted through much more than the uh, fl Kid Flash was. Let's see if this side got toasted on both sides as well. Hmm. Yeah. So maybe it's because Kid Flash here is already a year old, but GE managed to toast both halves of the bagel evenly, sort of, on both sides. Well, evenly for each, evenly when you compare the two sides. When you compare the side to itself, it's not evenly toasted, but that's usually how bagels are. So the G did pretty well, clearly better than the Kid Flash. Now finally we have our Joshua here. Joshua clearly did not evenly toast this bagel, just like uh, GE did. How, I, however, it is odd that, like I said, the 
Joshua seemed to have raised its temperature much higher than GE did here because Joshua at two did not toast the other bread quite as much as the GE did, and they're both at two. The only difference was that I also pressed the bagel button. So clearly Joshua raised its temperature by quite a bit when I pressed the bagel button. Hmm. Hmm. Oh wow. Yeah. This is toasted all the way through. Let's uh, take a bite out of this one, out of the least toasted part. Mm. Even the least toasted part is toasted all the way through. So, clearly, the bagel button on Joshua raises the temperature enough to really toast the bagel all the way through, which is pretty cool. Now, let me clean all this up, and then we'll get on to the conclusion. I'll be right back. All right, welcome to the conclusion of this video. Yeah, the conclusion. Anyway, uh, I have tested our three toasters in the great toast off of 2021, and I have found all three to be lacking. Down votes for all of them, yes. Now, the question was, did I waste my money on my $15 toaster and should I have gotten a more expensive toaster for my needs? And the answer is complicated. So I primarily use this toaster for uh, Pop-Tarts and the artisan bread, and that's about it. I also have Eggos, but I eat them like once in a blue moon. I think that for that person, this toaster is actually just fine. And if you don't care that much about your toast, you just want toast. If you're the kind of person that buys the cheapest white bread because you just want some toast to go with your other breakfast, or you just want something maybe to make your toaster strudel or to heat up a Pop-Tart, if you're just looking to basically heat something up and not really toast it, then honestly, spending 15 bucks and getting the cheapest toaster is good enough. It's not that big of a deal. Now, that said, if you care about your toast, if you care about having nice, well-toasted bread, or if you make bagels, especially if you make bagels, then I would say do not get this $15 toaster. Do not get any $15 toaster. Look to spend around 50 bucks for your toaster, especially if it's uh, just you by yourself or it's you and a single loved one. Now, if you're making toast for a family, if you're toasting things for a family and you have a lot of family members, a lot of people that like toast, a lot of people that like bread um, or toasting things, then look to spend more. Getting a nice large toaster that can handle, uh, that can evenly toast multiple pieces at the same time is a big deal when you have a lot of people to toast for, especially when uh, there are plenty of toasters that are sort of like this, that have multiple slots, that the center two slots do not get the same level of treatment. So make sure that you uh, pay attention to those kinds of things as well. Now, the winner of the contest obviously is not our $15 toaster. It was never going to be our $15 toaster. It was obviously going to be our Joshua or GE here. And I would say overall, as far as toast quality went, Joshua was a step above the GE toaster, um, mostly because of the fact that... I'm sorry if there's problems with audio. Uh, mostly because of the fact that uh, it evenly toasted every single time except for with the bagel, which was fair because it's a bagel. But with the other pieces of bread, it toasted it evenly on both sides. While it wasn't as toasted as the GE, I was running on some of the lowest settings. You can clearly raise those to get better toast uh, or darker toast if you want it. Um, but I think that consistency, texture, 
and uh, evenness is very important when you're making toast. I assume that's what's most important when you're making toast. And Joshua here did a much better job at coming up with consistent results that were even. The GE did do a really good job of toasting a single side. So if you're kind of person that um, likes to have one side that's more toasted than the other, then the GE might be the way to go if that's your kind of thing. I don't know what kind of monster you are. Maybe you're that kind of monster. But if you're that kind of monster, then the GE would be the way to go. Although honestly, you could probably tweak the settings a little bit and get a little bit better toast out of the GE anyway. However, I would say if you care about your toast whatsoever, do not think about spending anything less than $50 unless it is a $50 toaster that is on sale like this GE was. If you are a toast aficionado and all you care about is toast for whatever reason, look to spend at least $100 on a toaster, maybe even more. There are very expensive toasters out there, so the world's your oyster, I guess. But that's it. That's all I've got for you. I guess, you know, the final question is, did I waste my money? Personally, I don't think I wasted my money on this toaster. However, I did totally waste my money buying two toasters just for this video. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, give away uh, these toasters to family members and try to, uh, <laughs> I don't know, recoup. I don't know. I, wa I wasted so much money. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this sort of off the wall video that's very not exactly the same as my other videos. Um, toasters are gadgets too, I think. Uh, <laughs> If you uh, do not agree with my results, or if you have another toaster that you would like me to try, uh, please leave a comment. Let me know. I'm very curious <laughs> to see what people have to say. And don't forget to like the video if you liked it. Don't forget to dislike the video if you disliked it, because, you know, if you dislike the video, I would like to know. It helps. It helps me know. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. By the way, we passed 200 subscribers since our last video. That's awesome. Thank you guys for subscribing. I hope more of you subscribe so that I can monetize these videos and make back some of the money that I've wasted on toasters. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a good night. I hope you have a good week and I will see you in the next one. Bye.